result than uh, pure sprint training. Finally, uh, another study that we did was uh, trying to determine the uh, age-related differences in repeated sprint ability in these highly trained youth football uh, players. We know that uh, there is a lot of emphasis uh, everywhere on determining repeated sprint ability, but the evolution of this variable has not been uh, described. So what we did was take all of our academy groups and perform the same test exactly in the same conditions um, in, in an identical manner. What you see here is the uh, mean time uh, for the uh, mean sprint time for each one of the age groups. And as you can see, there is a significant decrement in the time all the way to the under 15 group, and then there is an stabilization of that uh, performance. So probably this gain in performance is mostly related to growth, whereas the gain in performance here is mostly related to training. And when we looked at uh, peak blood lactate concentration, we measured lactate at one minute, three minute, one minute, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, and 10 minutes to determine peak blood lactate concentration, we see a linear increase with time. However, when we divide the peak blood lactate concentration by body mass, what we see is that there is no significant difference among the groups. Here you see the relationship between mean sprint time and first sprint time and peak black lactate. So basically, if a player is able to produce a lot of lactate, he is going to go very fast. Or the other way around. If a player goes very fast, he's going to produce a lot of lactate. That is what we don't know for sure. And that applies to uh, total time, uh, to mean sprint time, and also to the first sprint time. The conclusion from this study was that uh, differences in sprint time were strongly correlated with differences in body mass and height between the age groups. So growth had a huge impact on RSA. Despite previous suggestions that children recover more quickly from intense exercise than adults, we report for the first time that there were no significant difference in percent sprint decrement among age groups. So we read in uh, physiology books that children recover very quickly, that they don't have the ability to produce a lot of lactate because the, uh, the uh, uh, enzymatic system is not prepared. Apparently, that is not true when you are dealing with highly trained youth football players. Post-test peak blood lactate concentration tended to be progressively greater from one age group to the next, but remained constant when adjusted for body mass. So the ability of children muscle to produce lactate is as good as that of young adults. This is a summary of the physiological and performance gains elicited by intense exercise. If we focus on this side, team sports during normal training and during tapering for the most important competitions, we can see that high intensity training is going to help us improve VO2 max, peak aerobic velocity, lactate threshold, running economy, sprint performance, intermittent performance, repeated sprint ability. And during the taper, it has been seen that this type of training can improve muscle strength and power, vertical jump, anabolic markers, reduce muscle damage, sprint performance, repeated sprint ability, and shuttle run performance. So high intensity training is very, very important for a sport like football of any code. This comes from a consensus statement that, that was organized by James Bangsbo and the group in uh, Copenhagen regarding uh, intense training. And these are the consensus statements, some of the consensus statements uh, from that conference. I'm about to finish. There is a strong evidence indicating that high intensity training is associated with maximal physiological and performance adaptations during periods of intense training in highly trained individual sport athletes. 
There is also strong evidence indicating that training intensity is key to maintain and enhance physiological and performance adaptations during the taper, and therefore, the training load should not be reduced at the expense of intensity when we are approaching the main competition. Intense exercise is a critical component of team sport performance, and there is a strong evidence to suggest that the optimization of the player's ability to perform this type of effort should be a priority. And the last one, limited available research suggests that team sport athletes could benefit from a high intensity tapering program to optimally prepare for the regular season and tournament style competition. Before I finish, I would like to acknowledge the contribution to uh, football related uh, research of the pioneers that are no longer with us, like Tom Riley, Bob Withers, and Doug Tunnelty. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, just before we have uh, just one or two questions, uh, can I just announce to everyone that uh, at room two, uh, which was due to start at 9 a.m., uh, was delayed and is starting at 10 a.m. So if anyone was uh, wondering why room two was empty previously, um, it is now starting at 10 a.m. if you're uh, looking to go to some of those presentations. Is there a, a quick question for Inigo? Thank you. Inigo, was there any difference around the timing of the picot velocity in terms of the high intensity intermittent training, in terms of their workload or capacity compared to when they were a little bit younger? Well, you have to keep in mind that this is a, it's a cross-sectional study. It's not a longitudinal study. So I can only make assumptions. Uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, Matt Spencer presented uh, some of those results. And based on this longitudinal study, it appears that around the age of 14, 15 is when RSA peaks and then there is a decrease in the, uh, in the velocity of, of improvement in repeated sprint ability. And I think that probably indicates that uh, up until peak height velocity, uh, most of the improvements are related with uh, growth. And probably after that, you still get some benefit from growth because we've seen very significant relationships with uh, body mass and body, body height. Uh, but I think you can get a, a, a full benefit of, uh, of training. Thanks. Um, one last question. Uh, thank you for interesting uh, uh, presentation. Uh, I uh, have uh, some questions. Do you have any evidence uh, in decreasing the exercise induced cramping after the, uh, doing the you made plan for the younger players? And the second one is, if you have the data, what was the effect of uh, uh, the data? For example, uh, enhancement to uh, anaerobic ability or uh, psychological aspect. The last one is uh, please give your opinion how to avoid uh, cramping during a match because you are specialized in uh, tapering or conditioning. Uh, the evidence uh, about avoiding cramping, this is a case study. That player in particular stopped cramping. And our conclusion was that this player was detrained. He was so good technically that he was detraining. He would solve every situation that arose during training and during matches by doing something uh, excellent technically mm -hmm. or tactically. So he, he didn't need to run. So he was detrained. When we studied the training, this particular training program, he got trained again and he stopped cramping. Um, the second one was... Uh, what was the effect uh, the stop cramping? Uh, so, uh, I don't have any evidence, but I, I, one of the reasons why I said that uh, small-sided games are not ideal for everything is because I think when you play small-sided games, especially if it's a, a very reduced area, there is a type of activity that you never do. 
which is running fast and having to having to push hard on your legs. You are all the time you are in this position. You are not you are not pushing. And I think when you have to run fast in line, that provides an additional neuromuscular um, stimulus to your muscle. And I think that contributes to reducing the, uh, the cramping of the players. It's my gut feeling. I can't prove it. But I'm convinced that it, uh, that it helps. Thank you, Inigo. Um, we need to move on. So once again, can we thank Inigo for his presentation?